big news yesterday was about Debbie Stabenow. And my favorite tweet of the day is this. Allow me to quote. According to sources, place name here is strongly considering a run for Stabenow's seat in the U.S. Senate. And it certainly does seem like anybody and everybody who has ever had an R or a D after their name is thinking about a run uh, for Senator Stabenow's vacant seat, what will soon be vacant, uh, with the exception of Gretchen Whitmer and Mike Duggan, who have said that they will be continuing in their roles till the ends of their terms. Let's bring in John Selleck, founder and CEO of Harbor Strategic Public Affairs. John, good afternoon. Hey, good afternoon. I was going to complain. I was going to complain about you being out in Vegas in the warm weather, but. Uh, I succeeded at making you happy with a tweet, so I'm, I'm going to celebrate. Well, and you've got better weather than we do out here. Poured rain yesterday. The folks oh, at, really? The folks that, at Volkswagen that are doing outside demos had a horrible day. Uh, they had, oh, they had nobody. So, yeah, you're doing better than we are, pal. Uh, <laughs> I, this, it, this is already a challenging cycle for Democrats in terms of defending the seats that they have in 2024. Then you have Debbie Stabenow opening up one that they thought was a sure thing. Is this a big opportunity for Republicans? How big? Well, it is for a lot of reasons. First, it was unexpected. Uh, I think Michigan thought it would have a role, A, in the presidential race, and then B, at um, trying to recapture the state house. They, the Democrats have the slimmest of majorities there. They, have, they need 56 votes to pass a bill, and they have 56 votes. Um, so the Republicans might feel good about having a shot at getting that back. But we didn't really have anything on the ground here that could potentially be a, unify, a unifying force, something that gets people excited and motivates them. And trying to win a seat in the U.S. Senate, especially when the U.S. Senate is so darn close, um, is something to get excited about. And I think a lot of people are. I mean, they're excited on both sides, guys, as you know. Sure. Um, but it could be a big thing for the GOP in Michigan. So who looks promising for Republicans? We're hearing a lot about Candace Miller. Um, certainly there are, you hear names like, you know, some of the old standbys, like your, your good friend Bill Schutte and others that might consider for something higher. Um, who looks promising at this point when you place name here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. I think we have a little way to go to watch all that shake out, obviously. And the safest assumption would be that we could see a large field like we just saw last year for the governor's race. And that means there's going to be a bunch of, you know, activists and gadflies at the bottom. And then there's going to be some self-funders at the top, you know, like a Kevin Rinke or a Barry Johnson or something like that, perhaps, or a different uh, business leader or, or independently wealthy person. Uh, I think we could see people that previously held office, like a Mike Cox or a Bill Schuette, uh or Candace Miller, certainly. We could be surprised a little bit and see one of our sitting Congress uh, people jump in the race. You know, I when I look around, I look at the new energy behind Lisa McLean, someone that came into office and quickly has made her name for herself amongst the GOP leadership in Washington. She could be somebody that we look at. Uh, it's wide open, and it's not really any different for the Democrats. The only difference as far as um, uh, their side is that they just have way more elected officials currently serving on their bench, but they have just as many people interested in running because, Guy, you know this from your experience, open Senate seats just do not come along very often, sometimes no. only once in political life. And so we're going to make we're going to see some people make some tough decisions because they know they might not get a chance again. Well, and longtime Michigan residents on the Democrat side may find themselves dismayed to see Pete Buttigieg, a, a relatively newcomer, uh, throw throw himself into it. What what does he have enough Michigan street cred to run as a as a Democrat in Michigan, or will he be viewed as a carpetbagger? Well, we've seen more and more examples over time of sort of celebrity candidates moving to a different state. You know, it's not that they're usually moving to Michigan. They're moving to New York or California or some other place like that. And we can't be immune to that. So there is certainly the possibility he didn't rule it out, that's for sure. He gave the standard political answer. I'm just very happy with my current job, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but, you know, like you look at it, you, have, you need to look at it from the, the shoes of uh, President Joe Biden. Uh, he's already, uh, I'm sure, leaning on Governor Whitmer and saying, I need you to deliver Michigan for my re-election. And now he just called and said, I, oh, by the way, I've got a second X. <laughs> we weren't supposed to lose that Senate seat. Debbie Stabenow had a really good chance of being re-elected, uh, and I need it. Like, we have a big fight to control the Senate uh, across the country. Michigan shouldn't be on the map. It shouldn't be a place where we have to play, but now we're going to have to. Mm -hmm. We need to do something to help make sure that the Democratic primary is not a big, giant, messy, ugly fight. 
Um, but, you know, there's a lot of ambition out there, and a lot of people who are looking for what they do next. Um, whether you're a Republican or a Democrat, it's no different. Uh, every politician has goals and things they want to accomplish in their lives, and some people are going to say, I can do it much better from the U.S. Senate. So we had a lot of newcomers in the, in the governor's race on the Republican side. Whitmer's incumbency and the challenge thereof chased away some folks, but also the prospect of having to get uh, Donald Trump's endorsement or putting a lot of money into a campaign, not getting his endorsement, and finding yourself on the outside looking in. How much will the presidential nominee by that point uh, influence our, 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 our primary? Because our primary is going to happen pretty early this cycle around. If, if Donald Trump is still in the race, if he looks like a front runner in Michigan, um, if you're considering whether or not to run, is that going to be something that gives you pause? It is, but not to the extent that it used to be. Um, and, you know, you started off the show talking about Kevin McCarthy, and that's the number one uh, example of why the Trump endorsement is not necessarily what it used to be. Uh, we watched some of his sort of political offspring in D.C., like uh, Matt Gates and Lauren Boebert, just rub it in his face that they were not going to do what he was telling them to do. Uh, and we're going to find that happening more and more often going forward. Does that tell you that they yeah, were really that they really weren't listening to him? Or was he sending messages behind the scenes saying, look, I'm doing this, you guys do what the heck you want to do? Uh, it's possible, and because of the unpredictability uh, of President Trump, I think we're able to sit back and wonder if there's a million different head fakes and deep fakes going on. But for now, we just have to look at it on the surface. I don't think you'd normally put up with people uh, being disloyal to him or, or, or being negative toward him in public. Um, so I do think that's an issue. And then the other unknown factor is if a Ron DeSantis runs, who in by all polling shows the only person that would be the significant challenge to Trump, uh, gets in and he decides, I need to start picking my own people. There's going to be a team of people that run with me. Uh, his endorsement could come in um, in a very handy way. And I, I think certainly uh, when we, we mentioned some names so far, we could even see a James Craig say he's going to be interested in again. But the easiest person to start with, obviously, is Tudor Dixon. She just kind of got things ramped up toward the very end of her governor's race. She finally started having money come in. And mm -hmm. it is a learning experience to do that for the first time. Uh, so she would seem to be more quickly situated to running for that race. And here, getting in early, if you raise the money early, could go a long way into blocking out others from making an impact. And I think that's why on the Dem side, we may see an Alyssa Slotkin uh, or a Mallory McMorrow jump into this race sooner than later to try to get the head start. So in, in terms of an endorsement, though, um, we saw former President Trump insinuate himself into the governor's race, the attorney general's race, secretary of state to a degree in Michigan we've never seen before. It didn't end well. Um, will he be as influential in this cycle, whether he's having success as a presidential candidate or not? I think um, his impact is reduced. Uh, if you're a GOP candidate for any office, though, um, if there, there's only one endorsement that carries the weight his does, even if it's at a reduced level or a more complicated level, it's still his, and folks are going to be seeking it. Um, there's also just the personal ambition of wanting to be a U.S. senator. It's just a, it's just a really big deal still, uh, and you may be willing to run for it regardless. And an example of that would be Peter Meyer. Um, okay. In his exit interviews, at the end of his uh, time in office last you know, last month, he made pretty clear he wants to run for something again. Should there be a really big uh, primary, like the governor's primary, and there's two, three or four people vying for 15, 20, 30 yeah. percent at the top, somebody like Peter Meyer can get through. All right. John Selleck, always a pleasure to connect with you, and I'm sure we're going to be doing it many times. As we're going to see some announcements in the next few months here, and uh, we'll analyze them as they drop. Thanks so much. Yeah, have a good time in Vegas. When we come back, a...